Hi, hi, good afternoon. I am just going to do um a mic test here. Mic test, mic test. Comment one, mga kapatid. If you can hear me loud and clear, comment one sa ating comment box. Okay, comment one, comment one, please. If you can hear me, para ma-check natin yung ating soundtrack, ay yung ating um, volume. So, good afternoon, everyone. Wait lang natin yung bang mga classmates ninyo to join because there are three sections in this discussion. Ayan, magkakasunod yung uno na nakita ko. Sana lahat uno ang grade. Thank you for the feedback. Let's wait a mo for a few more moments, mga kapatid, ha? Ayan, gently reminder lang mga kapatid sa mga walang sections dyan ha. Lagi nyong ilalagay yung sections na kalagay naman dyan. Family name is first and then you have to input your respective sections mga kapatid. Tatlong section tayo kaya medyo mahirap hanapin. At hindi ako sinisipag nagahanap ng pangalan ng mga walang sections. Automatic pag nakita, nakita ko yung section, click ko lang yung section ninyo, check attendance, ganon. Okay. Um, one more minute for the others to join, and then with or without them, we start. <coughs> Ayan, so um, sabi ng mga classmates ninyo kanina, loud and clear naman ako. So I think we are to start or we can start and the others will join later. Although sabi ko hanggang 4, 10 lang ako mag-check ng attendance. So stay with me until the end of our discussion because I'm going to explain at the end our um, activity. Again, activity manan ana. Mapurpurga kayo nga tata-activity. But anyhow, for our discussion today, we are going to um, discuss yung ating uh, transnational crimes. Pero balik lang tayo ng konti. Ano yung mga na-discuss natin last week? Um, <clears throat> ano yung mga um, pinag-aralan natin last week? I mean, ang discussion natin today is globalization, mga kapatid. So ano yung mga pinag-aralan natin last time? We have discussed yung mga um, concepts of policy sa ating offline lesson to ha. Kasi yung online lesson, siguro naman na-explain ko ng okay. Ayan. 
kakabsat i-remind kayo manan, ah, no, medyo paspaspasak na agsasao dito. Ag-comment kayo mo, ah, ma'am, inayada mang basit. Hindi na kakayang mag-comment ng ganun, okay? Huwag kayo maya. Kesa naman sa hindi nyo maintindihan, tapos later on, malalaman ko pala na mabilis pala akong magsalita, di ba? Dito sa discussion, dito nyo sabihin, ayan. Huwag kayo maya sa mga ganyan, hindi naman nakakaya yan. That is okay. So, let's go back. Sa ating offline discussions, I hope you have watched the, the um, video. That is for all sections. Yan. So, sa ating um, offline discussion, diniscuss ko doon yung ating old concepts and the modern concept and the difference between these two concepts of um, police service. Yan. So, ano yung concept ng old concept? Ano naman yung sa modern concept? How are they, they the same? How are they different? The same with the theories of police service. Continental and the home rule theory. Saan sila magkaparehas? Saan sila magkaiba? And of course, kung saan nanggaling yung ating word na um, politeia, yung ating word na police and policy. Ayan. So I hope you watched the you know video. Ganyan. For this week, we are to discuss here on our live discussion yung ating um, globalization. Ayan. Nakabantay ako sa comment box, mga kapatid, so you can just, you know, um, <clears throat> hit the comment box anytime that you have problem about our discussion or you have some questions regarding our discussion. And so, what is globalization? And is it related to crimes? Is it related to criminals? Ganyan. Or is it even related to policy or to the police, yung ating globalization? Ganyan. Yung globalization was defined in a lot of ways and it has um, a lot of meanings. Meron ding um, iba-iba yung definition ng globalization. Yes. Pero kukunin lang natin yung konting definition or yung ilang definition that has relation to um, crimes, policy, and relation sa ating subject. Yeah. So in globalization, it was defined as a reference to a world in which um, society, culture, politics, economics, or all of this are interlinked or they have senses closer together para silang magkakalink paano silang magkaka um, paano yung relationship nila with each other or that has relationship with each other ayan <clears throat> meron daw relationship with each other yung ating society yung ating culture yung ating politics yung ating economics and that could be defined as globalization. Ganyan. So, bakit nalilink yung ating globalization? Kung ganyan yung definition ng um, globalization na magkakalink or meron silang mga relationship with each other or they are at least related to each other, why is it related to um, crimes or to policy or to criminals? Ganyan. Kasi yung ating... Um, yung ating... Crimes is nangyayari yan kapag merong um, migration or there is time a uh, term of travel. Ayan. So magta-travel ka sa ibang bansa, for example, at ginawa mo yung crime. Nagiging global ngayon yung crime na yan. Although kahit na ibang ilang places pa lang siya nangyari, ganyan. And of course, yung communication between these um, societies, between the cultures of from one country to another, nagkakaroon niya ng relationship. At kung may, naring, may nangyaring crime doon sa communication, nagiging global ngayon yung crime na yan in terms of communication. Ganyan. So, naiintindihan yung term ng globalization. Kapag sinabi natin globalization, it's happening worldwide. It's happening to a lot of places. Hindi man siya sa buong mundo, um, sa karamihan ng lugar sa mundo, yung globalization. Ganyan. So, globalization is not a bad thing per se. Ha? Globalization is just defined as a relationship between um, societies, cultures, politics, economics, uh, also rights uh, in relation to law enforcement, in relation of laws, mga ganyan. <clears throat> so, um, kapag sinabi ko, kinasabi ko kanina, globalization is not really a bad thing or it's not, could not even a good thing, pero meron siyang negative sides or negative effects. In relation to criminology, in relation to crimes, in relation to law enforcement or policy, ito yung mga negative effects ng globalization. So one is um, crimes, white collar crimes, or yung mga trabahong um, ginagawa ng mga nasa business industry, for example, yung mga nagtatrabaho sa business industry, for example, 
those could be white collar crimes and also labor exploitation yung baka may mga parents kayo may mga relatives kayo na nasa ibang bansa isa sa mga um, examples ng labor exploitation is that yung pinirmahan nilang kontrata is ganito yung trabaho nila and then when they go abroad nagiging iba yung kanilang trabaho or mas mababa yung kanilang trabaho or mas mababa yung kanilang mga sahod that is example of um labor exploitation okay yung sa white collar crimes kasi hindi natin masyadong na-observe dito yan sa um Philippines pero uh, may mangilan nila naman yung, lalo na kasi yung mga nasa gobyerno yung nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno yung mga gumagawa ng crimes like for example yung um uh, pagnanakaw sa pera ng bayan that is actually considered a white collar crime ganyan And also one of the negative effects is job insecurity. This happened um, rampantly during the pandemic. Diba yung mga maraming nawala ng trabaho, ganyan. Uh, in this case, it says here, it's due to increased competition. Or, um, let's take your, or our, kasama pa naman siguro ako doon, yung ating um, era or yung ating generation, ganyan. Pero actually hindi. Magkaiba tayo ng generation. Yan. Generation X kami. I don't know what generation are you. Joke lang. But anyhow, yung generation ngayon, mas competitive sila kasi mas marami silang um, alam sa trabaho. Like for example, mas techy sila sa trabaho. Mas may alam sila sa mga um, SEO engines, halimbawa. As compared to those na hindi man hindi nakapag-aral or kung nakapag-aral man, hindi na pag-aralan yung mga ganung bagay during their times. Di ba may mga teachers pa rin naman ngayon? Aaminin ko, I am not 100% a techie person. Sometimes I still ask my husband how to do this and that kapag dating sa mga techie things, ganyan. So, um, <clears throat> ang ingin ng kapitbahay namin. But anyhow, yung competition na yun, mas maraming nawawala ng trabaho because um, a lot are more competitive or are more um, equipped than the others. So, yun, yung globalization sa global, kailangan nila ngayon ng mas techy na mga tao. Kaya nga maraming IT people, IT experts na kinukuha sa iba't ibang bansa. Like, for example, from the Philippines. Ganyan. So, maraming nawawala ng trabaho dahil hindi na sila makapag-compete in terms of this ones. Yan ay isa sa negative effects ng globalization. And international crimes that happen. Yan. Talakayan na natin yung international crimes. Like, human trafficking. How does human trafficking happen? Diba? Yung human trafficking, ibig sabihin yung um, pagkuha ng mga tao from one place, tapos ipupunta mo sila sa ibang um, lugar illegally. So, hindi masyado yan dito sa Philippines because yung ating bansa is, you know, archipelagic or nandun siya sa gitna ng dagat. Mas nangyayari yung mga human trafficking kapag landlocked yung areas. Um, example nito is landlocked ang ating um, Africa, dyan sa ating Eurasia and Europe. So, may mga tao na galing dyan sa South Africa, like for example, um, Nigeria, Niger, Sudan, what country are, else are there? Like Zimbabwe, Zambia, yung mga tao dyan is uh, tinatraffic, papunta sa Europe para gawing slaves, para gawing um, sex workers, mga ganyan. So, those are international crimes and those are part of globalization. Also, international crimes include yung ating world terrorism just a few days ago. Two days ago, to be exact, 911. Kahit hindi pa kayo pinapanganak ng mga panahon na yon, yung iba sa inyo, is alam nyo sigurado ang 911 na issue, di ba? When uh, two airplanes were hijacked to bring down the uh, Twin Towers of the United States of America, that is world terrorism. Yung ISIS na nangyayari sa iba't ibang lugar ng mundo, that is also present in the Philippines, especially in the southern part of the Philippines. That is example of world terrorism. And then also yung cyber crimes, ayan, um, kakadiscuss ko lang to sa ibang section din yung cyber crime. Last semester, ang daming nagpapapalit ng kanilang account sa aking, oh, sa ating FB, sa aming FB groups. Tapos tata ko, bakit yung nagpapapalit? Kasi nakahack daw yung kanilang accounts. Almost three sections yung nagpapalit, almost 50%. Kasi nga nahack daw yung kanilang mga old accounts. Pero yung iba, na, uh, na-revive, yung iba hindi. Pero that is an example of cyber crime. Kapag ginamit na yung account mo for something that is against the law, that is cyber crime. And that is neg- um, something negative. Yan, nakokontrol na nung iba yung ating mga accounts. That is one negative effect of globalization. 
Another one, yung drug trafficking. Recently, dito sa Cordillera, uh, may nahuli na ano. I think it's a female. I I did not follow the report actually, pero nakita ko lang yun na she was caught um yung marami siyang contraband na hawak yung ecstasy drug and it's worth millions na nanggaling pa sa ibang bansa. So that is example of drug trafficking. Nagiging rampant na siya. Another one, this is also an international crime, human rights violation. Anywhere you go in the world, human rights uh, violation is obvious or it happens and it's real. One example, kapag uh, ikaw ay bigla na lang ikinulong ng wala namang dahilan or wala namang constructive na dahilan, that is a violation against your right to liberty and freedom. Ayan. And that is um, <clears throat> an international crime that uh, happens. Ayan. Bagayo lang no blurred ka kasudyay or napaspasa ka. And then, bad effects of foreign culture to local culture. Um, this is my example ko kanina umaga, tapos um, parang tumahimik na lang isang klase. Yung sa BTS, I mean, hindi siya bad effect ha. I mean, that is your right, that is your human right to listen to the song of whichever band you like. Pero yung bad effects kasi ng ating foreign culture is, like for example, yung BTS nga. Although yung music nila is okay lang naman na example, meron yung iba na kabataan na gustong maging kamukha ng ating um, Koreans. Yan, nagiging bad culture tuloy yung um, image nila. <clears throat> nga oray di tayo mag-agro-agro pa nga Korean, kaya kay tayo, kay tayo nga agro pa nga Koreano, kasi dyan kasi dyan. Actually, yung iba sabi nila, that is good because that is improvement. Oh, well and good kapag improvement lang yung gusto mo. Pero paano naman kung yung culture na yun is in mo, pero hindi naman akma sa kultura natin dito sa Pilipinas. Nagkakaroon niya ng bad effects. Ganyan. And also another bad effect of foreign culture. Kanya yung mga uh, mas kita yung culture ng Spanish regime sa inyo, correct? And one of those na bad effects of foreign culture is yung um, mamayana system, ganyan. Again now kayo, damdaman! Mga ganun ba? Mga ano lang yun, simpleng example lang yun, but that is kapag ginawa yan on a large scale, it becomes a negative effect. Um, in a wide scale, nagiging global uh, problem yan or nagiging global negative effect. And deadly diseases, OMG, spread on global scale. That is happening right now. So yung um, konting background lang. Nawawala yung aking screen. Anyhow, uh, konting background lang dito sa ating um, what do you call this? The deadly diseases in a global scale, yung ating um, coronavirus was allegedly from a bat in um, Wuhan, China. And that is correct. That is uh, from a bat. I mean, yung, yung sinasabi ko ngayon is based on my researches ha, and based on friends that are there. Okay. Um, and uh, basta yun. And then, yung bat na yun, siya daw yung nag-spread kaagad ng virus. But actually, that bat was from one of the laboratories of um, China. Yung laboratory na yun sa Wuhan is um, yung, yung parang ginagawa nila sa laboratory na yun is to study human genetics or yung para makapagawa sila ng medicine for certain types of viruses, para makagawa sila ng medicine, maka-invent sila ng certain um, medicine or certain vitamins. And then yun nga, instead of discovering right away kung ano yung mga good medicines, na-discover nila yung virus. And that, um, you know, that is supposed to be very good na laboratory kasi ngayon mag-invent sila to help other people globally sana. Pero ang nangyari yung spread, ay yung virus naman yung nag-spread. Ganyan. So, but anyhow, sumunod naman kaagad yung kanyang uh, quote-unquote vaccine ko, no? Ganyan. So, negative effect, yung pag-spread ng deadly diseases on a global scale. Sa mga earlier times, meron yung Spanish flu, di ba? <clears throat> Isa yan sa mga naging um, diseases na na-spread worldwide during those times. Yung polio, pero buti na lang na-control na yan years, years after. Tsaka bago pa tayo pinanganak, na-control na nila yan. And then, price increase on commodities. Ayan, yung mga nanay dyan, nakatulad ko, or kung wala pang nanay dyan, yung mga nanay nyo, Sigurado akong nararamdaman nyo to. The price increase on commodities. Ganyan. Kasi usually mothers yung mga um, bumibili ng mga kagamitan. Right? 
kahit yung simpleng pagkain lang, nag increase ka agad yan. Yung mga uh, simpleng gamit lang sa araw-araw, nag increase yung kanyang commodities once na may nangyayaring um, global thing or global action. Ayan. And then, local industries taken over by the foreign multinationals in the Philippines, a lot of um, industries here are actually owned and operated by um, Chinese nationals, German nationals, um, and some European nationals, also American nationals. Ayan. Yung mga trabahador lang nila, sila yung mga local, yung mga people. Pero yung um, nagmamayari is usually foreign nationals or aliens dito sa Philippines. Yan. <clears throat> So, yan mga negative effects yan ng globalization that is uh, felt by one country to another. Hindi ko sinasabing Philippines lang ito nararamdaman yung negative effects. Pwede nararamdaman din ito sa ibang bansa like Thailand at a different scale or at a different measure. Hindi tayo iba-iba. Pero as generally, ito yung mga negative effects. Meron pang mga kasama to. Pero dito lang muna tayo mag-focus. Kasi yung iba medyo specific na siya. Specific na siya. Yan. And then, effects of globalization to police service. Paano naman na uh, apektado yung ating police service? Kapag yung crime ay nagiging global, yung ating police service ay nagiging, quote-unquote, global also. Ganyan. <clears throat> yung mga crimes before, um, they, like, you know, certainly happen to one specific country lang. Halimbawa, yung crime sa Philippines, crime lang dito. Pero dahil nagta-travel, or mayroon na tayong mga um, relations sa other country, mayroon na tayong link sa ibang country, pati yung crime, nalilink na din, or nag-travel na din sa ibang bansa, and vice versa, from other country to the Philippines din. So, nagiging um, international or global ngayon yung crime. And effect of that to police service, of course, either tumataas yung crime, dumadami yung mga kriminal, or... Um, super affected ngayon or nagkukulang ngayon yung sa police service. <clears throat> so, isa yun sa mga effect sa police service ng globalization. Dumadami, dumadami yung crime. Obvious naman yan. Ha ang globalization kasi could be also um, a development. So, habang may development, dumadami pa rin yung crime. So, nagiging rampant din yung crime. So, this is um, more specific na effects ng globalization sa ating law enforcement. <clears throat> And again, this is not only for the Philippines. This is actually, um, uh, this happens internationally. And so, kinuha ko yung idea na to sa sinulat ni kapatid, kapatid talaga eh, ni Professor De Los Santos. Ayan. But anyhow, the facilitation of transnational crimes and criminals can be easily achieved. Yung <clears throat> kapag kapag meron na tayong globalization, yung transnational crime or yung pagta-transfer or yung pagta-travel ng crime, mas madali. Or yung pagfa-facilitate o yung pag-ooperate ng mga uh, crimes from one country to another tsaka yung pagfa-facilitate ng mga criminals ay mas madali <clears throat> para sa mga organized crimes. Example, yung pagta-travel ng ating um, drugs yung drug trafficking from one country to another. Ayan. So, kasi yung ating globalization, nag-open yung market ng iba't ibang bansa. Ibig sabihin, nag-open sila ng pagpasok ng mga kargamento, pagpasok ng mga commodities, ng mga goods. Nag-i-import, export sila. Kasama rin dito yung import, export, halimbawa, ng drugs nga. Ganun. So, nagiging transnational yung crime. It travels. Pati yung mga criminal, syempre. Ganyan. So, mas madali silang na-achieve. <clears throat> and also, yung isang effect, may, meron ng pangailangan para sa transnational policy. Pati yung law enforcement natin, nag-travel na rin. Siyempre, sinusundan lang ito yung crimes, tsaka yung mga criminals. Nagkakaroon ngayon to ng cooperation between um, law enforcement or law, enforce, uh, law policing body ng isang bansa sa iba-ibang bansa. Yan. So parang yung cooperation natin dito sa um, Asia, meron tayong Asiana Pol or yung Asiana Police Organization. Or baka mas familiar kayo sa Interpol. Ayan. International Police Organization is um, an example of transnational policing that the style of law enforcement or the styles of policing of the different countries also um, travels from one country to another. Ayan. And then yung um, training in instructions for incoming law enforcement officers nagiging or nai-improve 
yung training ng ating mga law enforcers yan. Um, before, siguro mga 1990s, kapag nag-hire sila ng law enforcers, hindi mas na marunong siyang uh, mag-operate ng computer. Pero ngayon, sa panahon ngayon, that is one of the must. So, nag-i-improve, nag-a-advance yung ating mga cops para maka- makasabay sila sa globalization, para makasabay sila sa pag-usad uh, ng mga transnational crimes. Ganon. Hindi lang siya um, in relation to cybercrime, actually. Yung ating mga computers, yung ating mga technology, hindi lang naman sa cybercrime yan. Nasa um, education din yan ng ating mga kapulisan. And of course, one of the vets, development of new strategies to deal with kapag may nangyayaring bagong crime, halimbawa sa isang bansa, na nangyari sa isang bansa, tapos parang nag-travel sa ibang bansa, magkakaroon ngayon ng um, new strategies. Magkakaroon sila ngayon ng new intelligence, new enforcement, new rules, new laws regarding this um, new crimes also. Ganyan. So, umaakit, nagde-develop sila ng mga uh, bagong kaisipan, bagong strategy to combat or to fight off yung mga international crimes na yan. Okay, and then provisions of law enforcement with um, updated legislations. Like for example, yung ating um, ICC, International Criminal Court, nag update ang mga yan ng legislations ng iba't ibang bansa. Like for example, uh, pero yung ICC kasi umalis sa um, I Philippines, umalis kasi siya sa ICC, correct? Wait lang, hindi ko pala tinanggal yun. Maliplipatak na kakakabsat nga ikatanda ito, attendance check, at iparimay nyo lang tanong kwawan. I know, binabasa ko yung mga, hindi ko pa naman tinanggal yung ating um, attendance check. Yan, so for a moment, nasaan na? Ayan. Remind yung ako mga kapatid, usually nakakalimutan ko to eh. At nagkaiba. Ayan, so but anyhow, uh, let's go back. Yung provisions of law enforcement, yung mga bansa nagkakaroon sila ng mga constitutional conventions, halimbawa may naidagdag sa bagong na bagong rules and regulations sa kanilang mga bansa, meron na tayong mga um, interaction sa ibang bansa at nalalaman natin yun, yung kanilang updates sa kanilang um, laws, sa kanilang uh, legislations na related to crime. For example, nag-update ang um, Kingdom of Brunei na sa bagong law nila is lahat ng, mga kasala- ng may kasalanan is... Um, ano yung, uh, ipapunish siya ng death penalty, ganun. So, malalaman niyan ngayon natin. Malalaman natin sa Philippines, malalaman nila sa ibang bansa. Nagkakaroon ng um, interaction sa mga updated or sa mga updates ng kanilang legislations. Example lang yun, hindi ko sinasabing may death penalty doon. Yung globalization, meron din siyang iniwan na threat sa ating law enforcement. Um, Sam in Ilocano, I've asked, Ano yung threat sa Ilocano? Parang um oh god. Tama ba ako? That is one of the threat or danger. Threat is actually also um danger in Ilocano or para siyang yung ibig sabihin nito yung mga threat sa law enforcement is para siyang ito yung uh, pending nga pagad para sa ating law enforcement ganyan. So what is that? Increase of increase in the volume of human rights violations. Pag dumadami nang dumadami yung mga violations against human rights, nagkakaroon siya ngayon ng uh, mas matinding effect. Example is yung genocide or mass killing. Personally, I mean this is from me, this idea is from me. At pinili talaga ng kapitbahay kong mag-ingay ngayong oras. But anyhow, this is from me, this is my idea. Yung um, virus na pinakawalan is actually one uh, form of genocide that it kills the weak. It should kill the weak. It's um you know a survival of the fittest ganyan. So karamihan sa mga pinapatay ng virus, hindi naman lahat, pero karamihan sa mga pinapatay ng virus ngayon is yung may mga karamdaman na, yung may mga mahihina ng katawan ganyan. So that is a form of genocide or mass killing ganyan. Do not ask me who to blame because I'm not going to tell you my idea. Pero yung idea ko lang is that is one example na nag-i-increase yung volume ng human rights violation. To tell you honestly, uh, I mean this is a part of the human rights law. Ano? We are we all have the right to live. Pero yan, nabo-violate yan kapag tayo ay pinapatay ng hindi natin alam. Um, Sorry, hindi ko nakita yung comment. Natanggalin ko yung, um, ano, what do you call this? The reminder sa screen. Ayan. Pero natanggal ko na. Anyhow. Okay. 
So, ayan, isa yan sa mga threat sa law enforcement. Ngayon, kapag dumadami yung ating human rights violation, nahihirapan yung ating law enforcers to enforce the law. Or minsan, nalilito na yung mga law enforcers on which law to enforce. Ganyan. And one of those is the underprivileged gain unfair access sa global mechanisms ng law enforcement. Yung mga underprivileged, yung mga um, dito sa Philippines, sino yung mga underprivileged na sinasabi nila? This is not uh, by definition by the book, ha? it's definition by the people. Sino yung mga underprivileged? Yung mga magsasaka, yung mga walang pera, yung mga walang kapit, ganyan. Sila, wala, uh, unfair, or yung access nila sa um, law enforcement is unfair. O like, for example, merong crime na nangyari. Yung kapag um, kailangan mo ng justice, kailangan mo ng law enforcers, mabagal siyang darating. Kailangan mo ng uh, security, for example, mabagal siyang darating. Kasi nga, unprivileged ka. Because yung law enforcers natin nagkukulang. Or yung law enforcers natin, halimbawa, um, hawak ni governor, ganyan. Governor Matthew. <laughs> Joke lang. But anyhow, yung mga underprivileged, yung mga walang sinasabi sa buhay, quote-unquote, sila yung mga um, usually hindi nabibigyan ng um, equal treatment, equal mechanism ng ating law enforcement. Challenge din yan sa ating law enforcement or threat din yan sa ating law enforcement, to be honest. And then there's a conflict between nations. Like for example, yung Palestine and Israel. They're going at war. Yung kanilang law enforcement, hindi malaman. Lalo na dun sa um, Gaza Strip or yung kanilang border strip, hindi malaman. ba diba? Kung ano yung i-enforce na law. Kaya, um, sinesave na lang nila kung sino mga pwede nilang isave. Palestine ka man or Israelite ka man. Ganun. But, this conflict between nations is actually a threat to law enforcement. Minsan, um, hindi kinakaya ng law enforcement ng isang uh, lugar, isang bansa. Yung uh, threat ng mga conflicts. Ganyan. Buti sa atin, yung conflict between nations is hindi masyado kasi nga solo tayo dito sa gitna ng dagat. Ang conflict lang natin dito is yan. Between ISIS, between yung mga MNLF, and other factions dun sa Mindanao. And of course, yung transnational natin, ay yung transnational criminal network is um, dumadami, lumalakas yung mga networks ng criminal at ito ay mas nagiging uh, problema ng ating law enforcers. Example, yung drug trafficking. Ayun yung sinasabi ko. Although hindi masyadong rampant sa Ilocos Norte, dito sa amin marami. Lalong-lalo na pag-usapin niya ng marihuana. <clears throat> Madaming plantation dito sa amin sa Cordillera eh, yung ganito. So, drug trafficking is a threat to law enforcers. Money laundering. Yung money laundering, kasama rin dito yung pagpamimeke ng pera, yung um, pag-hoard ng money. <laughs> Terrorism as well. Those are threats on our law enforcement. Yung globalization naman, kung may threat sa law enforcement, meron din siyang opportunity or this is, um, you know, a little bit of positive side of globalization for law enforcement. Why or how? So, yung globalization, marami siyang threats. Marami siyang, ado nga iti karit na, ado iti paggad na, ado iti problema na para iti law enforcers. Pero meron ding opportunities behind those. Yeah. So, isa doon is yung um, creation of international tribunals Yan yung sinasabi natin na um, international organizations that deal with human rights problems. Tinutulungan ito ng ating mga law enforcers. One concrete example is the United Nations um, Human Rights, yung desk ng human rights sa United Nations. That is one of the most recognized or well-known international tribunal na nagde-deal with human rights problems. Bakit siya laging opportunity sa ating mga law enforcement or sa law enforcers? Because dito sa international tribunal, yung ating um, UNHR department or the United Nations Human Rights Department, naka-hire sila ng mga international law enforcers from the member countries para maging um, law enforcers nila whenever they go to a certain place to um, deal with human rights problems. Isang halimbawa, yung Philippines is one of the members para sa ating UNHR. So, marami rin silang kinukuhang kapulisan dito sa Philippines to become um, international uh, policemen or the UN police or the Blue Beret na tinatawag. UN police are peacekeepers and Blue Beret. So, sila yung mga tinatawag to deal with human rights problems kapag may pupuntahan yung UN na infected or infected, affected ng human rights problems like for example sa Africa 
maraming human rights problems dyan. Tapos gusto ng UN to go there for peace talks. Halimbawa, ayan, yung mga law enforcers from different countries na na-hire, sila yung ipupunta doon. So that is one of those um, opportunities. And also yung humanitarian interventions. Nagpo-promote yan kasi yan ng international link. Ayun nga, yung like for example, the UNHR. It promotes not only um, the law enforcers from this country, pero sa ibang bansa din. Nagkakaroon na sila ng link at nagkakaroon ng mas powerful na law enforcement yung bansa na yun kapag meron siyang international link or international intervention from other countries, from other uh, law enforcers ng ibang bansa. And then, Transnational Professional Network, it's uh, the same. Merong cooperation yung iba't ibang bansa against transnational crimes. O yan, example natin ulit yung Interpol. So, member, ta member country tayo dyan. Yung mga kapulisan natin, nagkakaroon sila ng um, networking. Nag-share sila ng intelligence. Nag-share sila ng information. Nag-share din sila ng um, uh, education. Meron ding cooperation uh, between these countries to fight against transnational crime. So, ayan, nadadagdagan yung kaalaman natin. Nakakapag-share din tayo ng ating kaalaman. Like, for example, ganon. And then, global groups for conflict monitoring and coalition across transnational issues. Yung um, global groups, um, ayan, uh, example na lang ulit natin yung UN. It's a global group na nagmo-monitor siya. Meron siyang certain desk na nagmo-monitor yung UN Peace uh, Office or yung UN Peace Desk. Sila yung mga nagmo-monitor ng mga conflicts around the world. Yan. So, um, opportunity diyan, din yan para sa ating mga law enforcement, as I have said oh, earlier, para makapagtrabaho sa UN at makapag-aral, halimbawa, ng bagong training, bagong kaalaman. And then, when they come back to uh, the Philippines, they also share yung um, kaalaman na yan. So, nagka-time check ako every now and then, ha? Nakikita ko 81 yung nasa screen. Anyhow. So, what are the characteristics of globalization? Um, papaano mas madaling i-determine yung globalization na sinasabi natin? Yan. Kapag may international movement ang commodities like um, oil, gold, silver, copper, and more, globalization yan. Um, and again, example na to baka sabihin nyo naman, parang anti-Marcos ni Ma'am. Hindi ah, hindi ako anti-Marcos. I am nowhere in between or I am nowhere on both sides. I am always everywhere again. Anyhow, yung commodities like for example yung mga Marcos, sila yung mga pinakamaraming gold na pag-aari sa Philippines. At pag yan nag um nag-move yan internationally or they go somewhere else aside from the Philippines, that can be called as globalization. Pwedeng para sa market, pwedeng para sa safekeeping lang sa Bank of Geneva, halimbawa sa Switzerland, mga ganun. That is already tapped as um Globalization. So, isa yan sa characteristics ng globalization. And uh, an, an additional info, yung Philippines is one of the top producers ng Asia ng, sa gold. Mas marami pa tayong napoproduce kesa yung ibang European countries like Italy, Portugal, France, ganyan. So, kapag nag may movement yung mga gold natin from Philippines to the international market, that is a form of globalization. Money, of course, money is everywhere and it's moving internationally. Although, ang dominant na, um, you know, nag-move is the United States dollar. Ganyan. <clears throat> Anywhere. Pero yung ibang uh, money naman, like for example, yung euro, yung pound, UK pound, actually, ina-accept naman yan sa ibang bansa. Pero money is um, generally the most accepted Diba? na pam, uh, pagpalit mo sa ibang bagay or pagpalit mo pa nga sa ibang pera eh. or pambili mo ng ibang bagay so money, there is movement of money around the world that is already a part of globalization since time immemorial yan, di pa tayo pinapanganap money is a part of globalization and it's one part na um, nagde-develop ng globalization Ayan. and then information of course Kahit nakaupo ka lang dyan, nag-cellphone ka, nagre-research ka, gumagamit ka ng mga search engines, SEOs, um, nalalaman mo yung mga information about other countries, that is already globalization. Yeah. Like for example, nalaman natin na yung virus is from Wuhan again. 
And that nalaman natin that um, the U.S. troops has already withdrawn from the Taliban or from Afghanistan. That is information. And that is global. That happens globally. Although, um, alam nyo lang dapat kung ano yung mga, you know, real information. Kasi hindi lahat ng information na nababasa nyo is uh, totoo or makatotohanan. Yun. <clears throat> May mga misleading kasi or meron yung iba is meron silang eh, gustong iparating na information and that they use this uh, information to control or to gain access, mga ganyan. But anyhow, yung spread of information is globalization. People, yan, um, yung influential people, sino yung alam yung influential people, for example, um, sa larangan ng um, politics. Uh, yeah. One for me is uh, Putin of Russia. One of those that characterizes globalization. <clears throat> And also, um, sino mga ba? Ah, alam ko. So, no, not politics na lang. O sige, let's take for example, sports person. Cristiano Ronaldo of soccer. Uh, mara, ang laki ng influence niya sa um, sports people. And that is global. So that is one form of globalization. Ganyan. Um, technology. Very, very basic naman yung technology. Tayo ngayon. What are we using? We are using technology. You're using your phones. I'm using my laptop. We are using internet. And that is form of technology that is global, happening globally, lalo na ngayong panahon ng pandemic. Yeah. So organizations, what are those organizations that um, has international movement? Ayan. Um, again, ulitin ko yung example ko. Yung United Nations, yung um, Interpol, Asianapol, Europol, Marami actually police organizations. Pero pag-aaralan natin yan, either sa finals. And then legal systems. Binanggit ko kanina, one example, yung ating ICC or International Criminal Co uh, Court. It's a tribunal to hold yung mga, hindi siya hold talaga, it to discuss cases that goes on around the world, not just in one specific country. Okay, infra. Kasano nga dati, infrastructure ko, dati international movement na kasiyay. Ayan. Saan ba nang galing yung mga um, pinagpagawa natin na materials sa isang infrastructure? Halimbawa, yung Patapat Bridge. Saan nang galing? Patapat Bridge, correct? Yung tawag dyan? I forgot. I've been there but I forgot the name. Yung Patapat Viaduct yata yung tawag. Saan ba nang galing yung mga uh, materials na ginamit natin dyan? Oh, let's take for example, galing sa China kasi mas malapit. Or galing Japan, mas malapit pa ulit. Yung uh, mga ginamit natin dyan. So there is movement of these materials for infrastructures. Kaya isa rin yan sa form of uh, globalization. Yan. So isa pa yung mga designs ng ating infrastructure. Sino ang nag-influence ng um, design ng patapat bayadak na yan? Sino ang may um, influence sa design ng uh, Capitolio? Diba? Mga Spanish yan eh. So that is international and that is one form of globalization. Okay? Alam yung dinagdag ko sa baba na um, this is a statement. The actual existence of some of these trends is debated. O, land. For example, yung um, infrastructure nga na sinasabi ko, debatable yan. Paano nagiging global? Or how is it global? Or is it really global? Ganyan. So, concrete example naman natin yung, ayun nga yung sinasabi ko, yung influence ng designs ng ating mga um, infrastructure. If there is an influence from outside the Philippines, automatically that is a global a form of globalization. Yan. Matartarosan nyo lang kakabsat at ibagbaka dito. Ako eh. um, mag-comment, ako um, mag-damdaman. But anyhow, nakita kami ibang comments sa ano ha. But, you know. So let's go back to the aspects of globalization. There are a lot of aspects to discuss in globalization, kapatid. Ang lawak kasi ng topic na globalization. Hindi natin matatapos ang semester na ito pag globalization lang ang i-discuss natin. So yung mga ano lang, mga pahapyaw lang na medyo may relation naman sa ating law enforcement. So one aspect is that um, it's a net of communication. Yung globalization, kapag nag exchange tayo ng communications with people outside of our country or to people internationally, that is already um, quote-unquote globalization. And pag nag-share tayo ng knowledge, pag yung pag-share natin ng knowledge kung halimbawa is meron tayong influence sa ibang lugar, Ayan, that is one form of um, globalization. And vice versa, kapag natututo tayo, may ganun. And economy, yung world trade, hindi yan po pwedeng mawala. 
Because um, Philippines, for example, is an open country kapag dating sa economy. Hindi ka pwedeng umunlad kapag ikaw lang. Ganon. Um, bakit kaya ang North Korea, maunlad naman sila, eh sila lang. Kalas lang siguro natin yun. Pero yung North Korea actually is also, they um, get some of their supplies, some of their um, economy uh, is para siyang nakabase or naka-dependent sa South Korea. Ganyan. And then society, yung society natin is a global village. Meron tayong migration. That is one form of globalization. And yung pag-share ng ating cultures, kanya-kanya tayo ng identity. Ikaw, Ilocano ka. Ako, Igorota ako. That is our identity. Uh, tayo, Filipino. Sila, Amerikano. Sila, Afrikano. That is our differences. All the, or that is our cultural differences. Pero as one, meron tayong interaction. And that is one form of um, globalization. Yeah. And security, isa sa mga aspects to natitignan natin, yung security nung um, iba't ibang bansa. Not only yung sa atin, ha? we will include a lot of the countries because we are going to study that in the subject, yung pagko-compare nung ating um, security, pagko-compare ng mga policy, security policy yung iba't ibang uh, bansa. So that is also one aspect of globalization yung uh, violence may nag increase ba yung terrorism nag increase ba mga ganun and then yung uh, political evidently the political is um, also global yung effect ni Biden yung effect ni Putin yung effect ni uh, Xi Jinping um nararamdaman niya ng ibang bansa yung mga decisions ng mga political leaders nararamdaman niya ng ibang bansa or yet ng buong mundo. Ganyan. Kasama din dyan, of course, kapag um, tinatalakay natin yung trade and industry, human rights, always human rights, and yung mga environment natin, or environs natin. So, yan yung mga pag-aaral nating aspect ng globalization. Communication, economy, society, security, and political. Okay? Meron ba di dapat dito yung... Um, Anong tawag din? Cultural, mga ganun. Pero hindi na natin masyadong magda-dive papunta doon kasi hindi naman siya masyadong uh, in relation sa ating um, discussion sa law enforcement. Ayan. So, pa 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 paano nga ba nagiging um, global problem or pa paano nagiging part ng globalization ng isang crime? Di ba? Pa paano mo matatawag na yung crime is a part of globalization? Ayan. So, dalawa yung criteria. Yung uh, first one is that it has an accentuating character. Or yung accentuating character na sinasabi is yung um, <clears throat> meron siyang effect. Meron siyang uh, relation or interrelation na effect sa ibang bansa. Okay? So like for example, um, try na, uh, try na, kunin natin example yung mga um, simple lang. Halimbawa ikaw, hinak mo yung account ng kaibigan mo. And then, yung isang kaibigan mo rin, parang natuwa. Uy, may gayam ti aghahak, ah, makita na gijay videos, ng ilumlumbong na dito, aghahak nak man mo. Ginawa mo yan. O, so, marami na kayong gumawa, halimbawa. Or kahit pa, dalawa, lima lang kayo na gumawa. And then, also, the same crime happened, halimbawa, sa Malaysia. So, meron din group of people na naghahak. Maybe because of the same reason, or pwedeng iba rin yung rason, pero naghahak din sila. And then, also, one person or a group of person, ginawa rin yan sa Singapore. Naghahak din sila. Hindi kayo magkakilakilala na grupo, pero the same yung ginawa ninyo. Hindi man siya ganun ka the same dun sa um, lawak nung kanyang uh, problem na ginawa or hindi man siya ganun hanging nga kasi kasi ka grabe, tiinarami jo as compared to the hacking of other groups. You have the same crime and that is becoming global. So kapag yung crime nangyari sa uh, more than one country and at the same um The same yung definition niya. Yun nga yung sinasabi ko, cybercrime, yung ginawa ninyo. The same yan, pero hindi kayo magkakilakilala. Hindi nyo alam na ginawa ng isang grupo yung dito. Hindi nyo ginawa, alam na ginawa ng isang grupo sa Singapore, halimbawa. Accentuating character yan. Magkakaparehas halos yung character. Now you have the, the deed, the cybercrime. That is now a global problem. Or that is now a part of globalization. ba? Diba? Kasi lahat kayo may internet, kaya ginawa nyo. Parang ganun. But do not do it, ah, mga kapatid. Yung mga hacking-hacking na yun. And, um, hindi naman, hindi naman ibig sabihin yung sinasabi ko nga. Hindi naman ibig sabihin na kapag ginawa nyo yan, dapat magkakilala kayo or dapat may relationship kayo or dapat alam nyo na may nangyaring ganun. 
basta nagawa niyo yan, even without the knowledge of that thing na ginawa siya ng iba, pero magkakaparehas, that is a part of um, global problem already. Ganyan. And another one, na kapag yung problema na yun ay nagiging global, kapag yung um, tao na gumawa nung crime na yun is ini-introduce niya yung crime sa ibang bansa or sa ibang uh, tao, sa ibang lugar. Or like for example kayo, yung hacking ninyo, um, in-introduce mo sa isang kakilala mo online na taga-ibang bansa, tapos ginawa niya din. Diba? Nagiging global ngayon yan, may link ngayon, may connection. As compared to the first one, hindi kayo magkakilala, pero parehas yung ginawa niyo. Ito naman, meron ng um, travel, quote-unquote, nung crime na ginawa ninyo. Ganon. Um, yung one example ng number one is yung rampant shooting tsaka yung mga pagpatay ng iba't ibang tao randomly. Just recently, may isang tao na naman na parang lahat ng makasalubong niya, sinasaksak niya, pinapatay niya in Australia. This happened yesterday ata or the day before yesterday. Ganon. Tapos parang nung ini-study nila, para siyang the same sa mga nangyayaring mass shootings sa US. Hindi man sila magkakilala. Hindi man sila, hindi naman sila um, the same ng kaisipan, the same ng age or the same ng background, pero the same yung ginawa nila. That is mass killing, ganyan. So yan, isa sa mga um, nagiging criteria para yung isang problem is magiging global. Yan, yung mass killing ngayon is actually a part of uh, globalization na hindi natin alam kung bakit nangyayari. Ganyan. Or actually alam ng government, pero yon. Okay, so the following are also, also considered as um, critical global crimes. Although yung ibang crime dito, hindi masyadong ganun ka-critical sa ibang bansa. This is a case-to-case -case basis for the countries. Pero most of these are happening in at least like 80% maybe or more than pa nga 80% of the, world, of the uh, countries in the world. Number one is illicit drugs. Yan. Siguro hindi pa, na, um, hindi pa tayo pinapanganak if you have watched yung early movies like Al Capone, yung mga ganun. Sila yung mga nagdi-deal ng drugs around the world. So yan is one of a critical global crime na hindi mawala-wala or hindi masugpo-sugpo. Kahit na may war on drugs na ang Philippines, hindi pa rin nagsusugpo ng Philippines ang illicit drugs. Ganyan. And then illegal trafficking in weapons. Uh, hindi man siya masyadong nare-report dito sa atin. May mga um, organized crime group Um, karamihan sa kanila is yung nasa south, southern part of the Philippines, meron silang mga trafficking of weapons. Sinasakayan sa bangka from Malaysia and Indonesia, may mga ganun na reports. And that is uh, illegal traffic of weapons. Not only weapons, but also human beings. Ayan yung sinasabi ko kanina, yung ibang tao, kinukuha ang slave, pinapasok sa ibang bansa without proper papers, passports, ganyan. That is uh, trafficking of human beings. Dito sa ating illegal traffic of weapons, one part of a uh, Russian country uh, opens like every five, once every five years for open market yung mga uh, weapons nila. You can just go there, buy or sell yung mga gusto mong high caliber weapons. And this incites actually to terrorism. But you know, <clears throat> anyhow, that is one of the rampant um, or critical global crime. And then money laundering. This one yung pamamake ng pera kahit saan naman yan siguro na bansa. Siguro except lang sa um, I haven't heard reports from like Switzerland, mga ganyan. Ba Iceland, wala siguro. Wala pa naman akong masyadong naririnig na reports sa mga ganyan or nababasang report about money laundering. Mas ano ito sa US, sa Russia, sa Asia, ganyan. Corruption, oh my gosh, that's everywhere. That's a critical global crime even before na hindi rin masugpo-sugpo or hindi mawala-wala. And of course, violent crimes that um, includes yung terrorism, kagaya nga nung 911 na sinabi natin. Nagiging global crime yan kasi meron siyang effect globally. Yung economy parang biglang nag-shutdown. Although during those times parang tumaas yung peso as compared to the dollar. <laughs> Ganun. So, war crimes. Ano yung mga war crimes? Like, for example, yung um, civil war ng United States or the Afghan war that has been happening for years na recently, quote-unquote, nag-end ko no kasi umalis yung mga US troops sa Afghanistan. Pero malay ba natin, di ba? Yan. So, yung Vietnam War. US against Vietnam War. 
Ano yung mga crimes na nangyayari dyan? Ang dami. Isa sa mga crimes na nangyayari dyan, yung human rights violations. Rampant din yan. So those are global crimes that happens in a lot of countries around the world. Ayan. And then, um, bakit kailangan natin maging concerned sa mga global crimes? Oh, na ako magbigyan tayo ngayon, no? dati terrorism sa Jay. Basta to ilokos na rotik at safety tayo. Hmm. Oh, hindi ko sinasabi nyo ng isip nyo ha. Like for example, ganun yan lang yung question ninyo. Meron kasing unwarranted effects or yung hindi natin alam yung effect. Yung virus, to be honest, when it first broke out, parang, oops, ang layo naman. Malayo pa yung virus. Ganun yung kaisipan ng karamihan. And pati, parang pati ako, parang, it's not gonna come here. Yan. So, so when some of our friends uh, start to, you know, die one by one due to this virus, naramdaman mo yung effect. Ganyan. Yung, um, like for example, last week, kakawala lang isang friend namin. One yung isa yung coach siya ng Ilocosur, head coach siya ng Ilocosur, na friend namin is, yan, yun yan, nawala siya due to the virus. So that is unwarranted effect. Hindi natin alam na mangyayari yung effect na yan sa atin ng global crime. Diba? Parang ako yung iisip ko, ah, nagaday yung madetang na virus, han siguro umay, umay dito yung Philippines. Nakansal yung mga international travels, diba? Hindi ka makalabas. Ako hindi makatravel sa Ilocos Norte. Eh, dati-dati, parang ano lang yan, easy lang kami mag-travel. Pag sinabi ng um, PGIN or the provincial government dati that they need our services there, travel lang kami. Pero ngayon, yung effect, eto. Diba? Yung effect din, iso, ito, itong isa. Nahihirapan kayo sa paghanap ng signal para sa lecture natin. Nahihirapan kayo sa paglo-load para sa lecture kasi ito yung effect which are unwarranted. Ganyan. So, dito na uh, analyze natin yung um, ba, uh, like, you know, bad effects, negative effects ng global crimes. Ganun. So, okay, what is the criminogenic effect of globalization? Anaman, data nga, criminogenic effect niya, bagbaga ni maman. Mm. Criminogenic, kahit nang asawan, it, uh, it tends to produce crime. Uh, like, for example, ginawa natin yung hacking na sinasabi ko. Or ginawa ninyo, ha, kayo lang. <laughs> ginawa ninyo yung hacking. Hindi naman ninyo alam na mangyayari sa ibang bansa yun, eh. Hindi naman ninyo alam na gagawin din yun halimbawa ng, sa ibang bansa. Pero dahil ginawa ninyo, na-inspire halimbawa yung taga-Malaysia, yung taga-Singapore, kasi nabalita kayo, ginagawa na rin nila. So nagkakaroon nga ron, ngayon ng crime. Or like for example, ma-influence lang kayo sa mga kapatid nyo, sa mga kaklase ninyo, gawin din nila yung crime. Nag-purproduce ngayon yan yung crime yung ginawa ninyo. ba Yun yung criminogenic effect. Kumbaga, um... Ano na yung nilalaro nyo? Tapos, pag tinumba nyo yung isa, matutumba lahat? Um, domino. Domino effect. Parang ganun yung criminogenic effect. Parang nagpo-produce na nung crime yung mga ginagawa natin. Ganun. So, that is um, criminogenic effect ng globalization. So, nagkakaroon ngayon ng power yung iba to control. Halimbawa, yung kayo, may, um, may naging interested sa ginawa nyo yung pag-hack. Yun pala, meron silang, um, you know, interest to criminalize those uh, or to capitalize yung ginawa ninyong crime para gawin nilang business, ganyan. Gawin nilang network, ganun. At hindi lang dyan, kundi globally pa nila gagawin. That is criminogenic effect of globalization. And then what are the links between globalization and crime? Bakit kung may globalization ba, may crime? Um, kapag kayo, sa tingin ninyo, Pag may, um, ayan, domino effect, yes. Domino effect, tama yun. And then, kapag may ginawa tayong halimbawang, um, ayan, gusto ko ng mga ganyan na yung nagpa-participate kayo, ibig sabihin nakikinig kayo. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really happy about those. Yung link between globalization and crime, hindi po pwedeng mangyari yung globalization ng walang crime. Ayan. I mean, pwede dapat, or dapat hindi, mag, dapat kapag may globalization or may development, Yung globalization kasi itake natin na development ha kasi nagde-develop naman talaga. Yung globalization yan or yung development na yan, nangyayari yan. Pero um, sa aaminin man natin o oh, hindi, kasama din yung crime na nangyayari dyan. O oh, For example, sa Philippines, um, tumataas yung ating economic progress. O yan, so nire-recognize na tayo ng buong mundo na, uy, nagiging capital na siya ng friendship, ganyan, sa Philippines. Di ba maganda dapat yun? Pero kasi may kaabikibat yan na crime. Ayan, yung uh, halimbawa yung pagdami ng mga um, mga cyber hackers. Ayan, so ang dami na lang yung, yung tourism ng Philippines tumataas nga, pero ang dami pa rin namang hackers na hinahack yung uh, tourism site or na-exploit yung tourism ng Philippines. So nagiging crime yan. 
yun yung link ng globalization tsaka ng crime. Kapag umaakyat yung globalization, umaakyat din yung crime. That is the reality na nangyayari. Ganyan. So yung um, globalization, lagi siyang nalilink sa um, crime. Kasi yung iba, like for example, yung ating travel, yung migration natin, kapag um, nag-open na yung ibang bansa for travel, halimbawa sa Europe, or let's take for example North Korea, ganyan, nag-open sila ng migrations or ng travel, masaya sana yan kasi that is um, a help to the economy. That is good for globalization. Pero sumasama yung crime, like for example, yung pamimeke ng passport, ganyan. Uh, once upon a time, once upon a time, or once we were traveling to Hong Kong for a certain fight, tapos may mga nakasabayan kami doon sa airport na ang gagandang mga, you know, female, mga old, older females, nasa 40s, 50s sila, ang gaganda nila, ang gaganda ng kutis nila, ang gaganda ng mga bags nila. Pero hininto sila nung um, migration because they have fake passports and fake travel documents. You see? Tapos ang reason nila is mag, uh, you know, mag-travel, mag-vacation somewhere in Europe. So, ayan yung sinasabi ko. Ang ganda sana eh, di ba? Kasi open na yung market, open na yung uh, migration, open na yung travel, open na yung tourism, communication, pero sumasama pa rin yung crime. Ganon. So, yan yung link between globalization and crime. That is uh, happening. Yan. Isa yan sa pinaka, pinaka relationship between globalization and uh, crime. Yung mga criminals kasi nagte-take advantage sila pag may opening halimbawa sa isang country. Halimbawa nag um, ano pa ba yung mga country na nag-advance? Like for example, Japan. Japan is very advanced when it comes to technology ganyan. Yung internet nila halimbawa 5G. Also China. No na sa China kami hindi ako nahirapan sa internet. Internet's everywhere. So sabi din ng sister ko na nasa Hungary yung internet nila everywhere. So, makakonek ka lang centralized kaagad, di ba? Ang ganda sana nun eh. Pero yung mga organized crimes, they take uh, advantage of this ones. Halimbawa, yun nga, yung 5G. Nagnanakaw sila ng information. They do theft identity. Ganyan. Minsan, hinahak pa nila yung um, sites ng mga government. Ganyan. So, yun. Kapag may nangyayaring development, globaliz- good globalization, kasama pa din yung crime. Bilis kasi mag-isip ng mga tao. Ganyan. So, what do we need to change that relationship or that kind of relationship? Apay nga kailangan tayo pa yung walang sukatan. Kan anat kailangan tayo nga um, sukatan is yung rela- relasyon ng globalization and crime. Friends sila eh, si, glo- si globalization tsaka si crime kasi they go hand in hand. Ngayon kailangan nating palitan yan. Na sana yung globalization mag-advance pa rin pero yung crime bumaba. ba? So ano yung mga kailangan nating gawin? Yan. One is or isa lang naman, actually, between countries, international cooperation. Paano mangyayari yung international cooperation? Number one, may cooperation yung ating law enforcement or yung ating law enforcers. They share information, they share education, they share training. Ganyan kasi mahihirapan yung isang bansa kapag uh, walang cooperation or wala siyang kahand in hand sa pagpa-fight ng ating uh, crimes that are effects of globalization. Like for example, yung drugs, mahirapan tayong subpuin yung drugs kung tayo lang sa Pilipinas. ba? Kailangan natin yung international cooperation with other law enforcement ng ibang bansa. Ganyan. And then also example of relationship between globalization and crime, aside from yung um, example natin kanina is yung uh, drugs. Yung mga developing nations is sila actually yung mga affected ng mga crimes ng um, drugs. Like for example, yung Southeast Asia and Philippines, ayan, bentahan niya ng drugs or um, hub, HUB, hub siya ng mga drug traffickers. Cambodia, hub din niya ng drug traffickers. Thailand is a very open country. Actually, that is a melting point of Southeast Asian countries. Ibig sabihin ng melting point, kasi lang nga mabaling nga pagsasabatan ti or ay nga nationality. It's an open country. Ayan. And um, those places in Thailand, may mga places sa Thailand na rampant yung exchange of drugs, drug trafficking between this and that country. Ganyan. So yun yung mga effect ng relationship between globalization and crime. Yung tourism nila doon, very maganda. And that is supposed to be good. Pero yun nga, sumasama pa rin yung crime. Ganyan. Yung natural resources are stolen. Ayan. Last week, or Saturday lang yata, may, na, may nakita akong report sa TV yung stolen yung mga pangolins ng Palawan, allegedly, and they are being sold. 
to um, other countries because of their medicinal properties. Ganun daw. But anyhow, yun, maganda na sana yung natural resources ng Palawan for the economy, for globalization. Pero ginagawa na naman yung crime na yun. So relationship pa rin nun is globalization and crimes are best friends that they go hand in hand. Pero balik tayo sa former slide natin ha. What do we need to change such kind of relationship? Matartaro saan yung walang kakabsat? And then, ito, prelude or preamble, kung natin malangan. Sila preamble, the gen next nga lesson tayo da ito. What is comparative system and why do we need to study um, comparative system? What is the relationship of comparative police system sa globalization? Yan. If there is an interaction among countries or if there is globalization that happens, yung ating um, pagko-compare ng ating police system or policy system with other countries uh, will become um, better or pagadalan itong comparative police system natin. There is a need to compare. Pero ano nga ba ang comparative police system? This is um, from the word itself, comparative, comparing the police system. Kat no, kung kumpara kayo, anya't ikumkumpara kayo. Diyo pagkaparehas kan pagkasabalila ang mat, diba? Correct? Yung kinukumpare natin. Kapag nagkukumpare tayo ng isang tao, ng <laughs> dalawang tao halimbawa, hindi mo na pwede ikumpare yung isang tao sa sarili niya. Yung dalawang tao, o. Oh. Mm, ano't pa nagkaparehas da gito eh? Ni Brad Pitt kay ni uh, Tom Cruise, ano't pa nagkaparehas da? Diba? Ayan pinagkasabali da. Parang ganun. So we have to compare the police system of that is oh, what is comparative. Yan yung definition ng comparative police system. Ano yung relationship nito sa globalization? Bakit kailangan nating pag-aralan or i-compare yung mga police system? Kasi sa iba't ibang bansa, iba-iba tayo ng batas. Although yung batas natin is for the people of the country, like for example, yung Philippine laws are for the Filipinos, the US laws are for the US citizens. Magkakaiba-iba pa rin yung ating batas. Ngayon, kailangan natin o compare yung ating batas para malaman natin kung alin sa mga batas na yun ang, um, you know, answering yung challenges ng globalization. Like for example, yung drugs, baka naman sa Cambodia is legal na mag-smoke ng marijuana, eh dito sa Philippines, uh, illegal. Diba? Sa Philippines. Sa Hong Kong, illegal halimbawa. Tapos pwede pala doon sa ibang bansa. We need to compare the police systems or the policy systems. Kasi iba-iba yung um, answer ng bawat country. Yan, sa globalization na nangyayari. Okay? So do you have questions, mga kapatid? That will, uh, that will be our presentation for this afternoon. Diyan tayo mag-e-end. Um, globalization lang yung topic natin for this. Um, yung uh, dalawa yung topic natin this week ha. First is itong globalization. Ito yung ating online. Yung susunod na lecture natin dito is offline. So you can, you know, listen to that offline anytime you want. Ayan. So as for this one, ayan. ayan. So before I give you your activities, mga kapatid, key in the comment box while I screenshot the names of those na late nag-comment ng kanilang pangalan. Baka may mga tanong kayo. Hmm? Nakadamagin nyo mga kapatid. May mga may hindi ba klaro or baka may gusto kayong idagdag sa discussion natin. Okay yung mga ganyan sa akin, yung mga magdadagdag or may suggestion kayo, mga ganun. Hmm? Mga kapatid, open tayo sa mga ganyan because this is a give and take. Hindi lang... Um, You know, hindi lang ako ang mag-discuss, gano'n. So, but in a, anyhow, baka may mga questions kayo, may clarifications, or may gusto kayong itanong. Ganyan. Do you have questions, mga patid? Adatihan nga, klaro. Dito yung um, discussion tayo, IT, comparat, ah, comparative, IT, uh, globalization, kung nakuma. Ayan. Sometimes pag nag-example ako, parang gusto ko magbigay ng mga complicated na example. Pero, ayan. Minsan hindi ko na rin kinukwento. Hindi ko na rin ginagawa ng example. 
Pero sana naiintindihan nyo pa rin kahit ganun kasimple yung mga examples natin. La. Habang sa una dito ay gururay nakti question, mga kakabsat. Hmm. Ala 30 seconds to give you chance to, you know, ask questions or nan. No, related lang naman sa ating lesson ganyan. Or related sa ating subject, pwede rin baka may mga gusto kayong itanong. Hmm? nag screenshot ako ng mga pangalan ng mga maliit na hindi ko na screenshot. Awin oh, darada magano yung kakabsat la. Nakata <laughs> Do you know what it feels like, like, you know, talking to your laptop to your screen, tapos biglang may tatanong ko, tapos wala namang sasagot. But anyhow, yeah, that's okay. So this will be your activity, mga kapatid. Pag nagbibigay ako ng activity, screenshot, okay, para meron kayong ano kagad. Pag hindi nyo na babalik-balikan, halimbawa yung end ng um, ating live. Pero maganda pa rin balikan ninyo pag may hindi kayo naintindihan. Okay, let me explain our activity. Ayan. So, yung activity 3 natin is uh, pertaining to global crimes. I would need you guys to do a little bit of research on this. Ayan. Thank you sa mga nag-feedback na walang mga tanong. Uh, you need to do a little bit of research on these um, global crimes. Okay? Hindi ko ito binigay sa inyo. Mag-research naman kayo kahit konti. But, warning. Ayoko nang mag, uh, ayoko nang kokopyahan. Sinabi ko na yan nung unang-una pa lang. Nakikita ko yung mga nagkokopyahan. Oray, pagbalibalik tayo nyo, nagitaan sa Rio, nagita country nga isurat nyo. Amok tumo lang nung nagkinopya kayo nung haan. You know? I would know. Okay? Gawin nyo naman yung ang um, trabaho ninyo as students. Oray, marigigatan kayo iti-signal kasi, you know, there is a challenge to you. Yan. So, bago pa ako pumunta sa mga ganong lecture, this is our activity. It's a global crime. This is section, um, this afternoon is section A, G, and I only. Yan. So, iba, kung may naka-join dyan na from other section, naki-join naki sa ating lecture this afternoon, hindi ito para sa inyong activity. This is for sections 2A, 2G, and 2I only. Okay? Ayan. So, um, ang gagawin natin is yung um, crimes. Yan. Sinulat ko yung mga crimes dito, ha? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 crimes that are globally happening. So, yung gagawin niyo mag-research kayo. Nung Asian countries, European countries, Pacific and Oceania countries na meron or rampant or the jenge masyadong marami yung ganitong mga um, klase ng crimes. Halimbawa yung theft or robbery. Punta sa Asian countries dito, sa uh, baba ng um, Asian countries, give me five to eight countries na um, rampant or the jenge na gato itikaso da iti theft or robbery. Ganyan. So mag-research kayo nung mga crime rates nila kap, uh, when it comes to theft or robbery. Yan. Hindi yung local ha na ginagawa kasi ito global crime na ito. So you compare. Uh, I-research you. Anong mga Asian countries? O ngayon, section A, G, and I, ang gagawin nyo lang is yung tatlong kontinente. Makinig kayo ha. Tatlong kontinente lang. Anong continents yung um, i-explore nyo lang? Asian countries, this one. So what Asian countries um, has this international or global crimes na walo. Yan. So, give me uh, 5 to 8 countries at least sa theft. 5 to 8 countries ng terrorism. Hindi pwedeng parehas yan ha. Kasi may mga Asian countries na hindi masyado sa human rights crimes. Like for example, Japan. Walang masyadong human rights crimes dyan. Baka adulti terrorism na dyan pero awam mati human rights uh, crimes na ijay. Ganyan. So, 5 to 8 countries each. Also, European countries. And Pacific and Oceania countries. Yung Pacific and Oceania countries are like New Zealand, Australia, mga ganon. Okay? So, tatlong continent lang. Asian, European, tapos yung Pacific and Oceania. Yung gagawin ninyo. Hindi nyo gagawin yung tatlong natitirang yan. Okay? Naawatan nyo dahil ito yung um, activity yung mga kakabsat, kakabsat. Ag -ag question kay man, kakabsat na damagan nyo kade. No, ada tiba di yung nawatan. Hmm? Kakabsat. Baka ada tiba di yung nawatan dito yung activity. A question kay Laong. Oh, damagan na Laong. Oh. No, niyat ma di yung nawatan dito yung activity. 
activity. Ayan. Yung mga nagpapasa dyan ha, ng activity na wala naman sa lecture ha. Hmm. Kala nyo, di ko nyo siya check ha. Pwede kong buksan yung aking um, lecture ulit, tapos i-replay ko lang kung sino yung mga nag-attendance within the time frame. Mga ganun. Lahabang ag sa sa una, dito ikat baka the questions you ask. Kapag may mga binabanggit ako dito, hindi ko kayo um, pinagtatanan or inuinsulto ha. Halimbawa, like for example, si Mr. Felipe, kabado yata siya na hindi niya na-comment yung pangalan niya. Tatlo yung nakita ko dito sa aking screen. Ayan, si Miss Corpus. But anyway, anyway, that's okay. Mga nauulit yung comment, that's okay. Yung iba kasi ano, hindi pumapasok na yung comments. Ganun. So yung iba inuulit talaga. Yung iba naman walang sections, kaya inuulit yung pangalan. Ayan, so explain natin yung activity ulit, sabi ng isang classmate. Itong activity natin, magre-research kayo mga kapatid. Uh, ang i-research nyo is anong bansa yung tinatanong ko dito. Um, give me what Wait, lakihan ko nga, may lumalit pala. Ayan, so tatlong continent lang. Like for example, Asian continent, European continent, tsaka yung Pacific and Oceania continent. Tatlo lang yan ha. Mag-research kayo kung aling country, halimbawa sa Asian countries. Anong country yung top 5 na marami yung crime ng theft or robbery? Anong country sa Asia yung top 5 countries na may terrorism or yung grabe yung terrorism nila? Sigurado na sa top 5 siguro yung Philippines. Ano? Asian country ah, maraming country ang Asia. More than 40. 41? 42? Afghanistan is one of the uh, uh, Asian country. You research on that, that is uh, one. Egypt. One country. Um, Kazakhstan, that is Asian country. Ayan. Baka ang alam lang natin Asian country dito lang sa atin. Those are part of Asian countries. Ganun. So, aling mga bansa, give me at least 5 to 8. Sabi ko nga, kung kaya nyo ng 8, why not? Pero at least 5 naman. Huwag iisa ha. Kasi hindi ako naniniwalang sa buong Asia, iisa lang na country ang may problem sa theft robbery, terrorism, or human trafficking, corruption. Ganun. So, limang country each. Lima... 5 to 8 countries. Ayan. Kung kaya nyo lang walo, why not? Sa research ninyo. So you do research on this one. Madi kaya kikinopya. O like, sabali ko yung section na compare ko pa rin. Ayan. So naulit ko na. Um, pa, paano ulit ha? Pa, pa comment ulit kung halimbawa may hindi pa rin klaro sa aking sinabi. So ganun yung uh, activity. Research ninyo ito. Kasi hindi ko ibibigay sa inyo yung countries. This is part of your activity to do your research. Ganyan. Okay? Ano yung countries are European countries? Top 5 countries na very rampant or ang dami nung um, gumagawa ng money laundering crime. Ganyan. Sa Europe, sa Oceania, ganyan. Give me at least 5. Oh, ma'am, kasano garun mo kuha? Nag-research kami ka tal-talo lang nga country. J Pacific and Oceania, te Adda. Mabalim in specific uh, reasons lang. Like Pacific and Oceania, hindi ganoon karami yung country dyan ha. Konti lang yung nandyan eh. Like um, Australia, Fiji, Tuvalu, New Zealand, mga ganun lang yung country dyan sa Oceania. Pero um, alam ko naman na may mga at least five. That's dry. Um, hindi na ilalagay yung uh, percentage. Ganoon. Like for example, Asian countries, yung top 5 natin is um, Philippines yung number 1 sa theft or robbery ninyo. Tapos 98% sila, kahit hindi na. Arrange, i-arrange nyo lang ha yung top 5. Ibig sabihin yung number 1 na country, yun yung pinakarampant. Number 2, yun yung second. Huwag nyong i-jumble. So arrange it from 1 to 5. Automatic na nakita ko yung, pag nakita ko yung first country, binasa ko, I will presume na yun yung nasa una. Yan. Hindi tayo, ito ngayon yung um, tanong. Ma'am, ha mga pare-parehas garot di search engine nga na usar kat baka sabasabali di data. Yes, iba-iba yung data natin. Pero uh, meron pa rin tayong, um, you know, like the average. Ganon. At yung kunin niyo yung latest, ha? baka naman yung kukunin niyo yung 1990s pa, ay na. Mm. Yung latest nga um, crime rates ng mga bansa. Um, yan, submission. Okay, um... Wait lang, i-comment ko na lang para may screenshot nyo na rin. Yung submission will be, um, ano yung susunod na na klase ko sa AGNI? AGNI is on Wednesday, tama? 
Ayan. So, Wednesday yung um, next na ano natin. Wait lang. I-encode ko na rin. What is today? 13, 14, 15, September 21. At then you have more than 24 hours. Ayoko nang may malit pa. Okay? Okay. That is the due date. Your due date is on Wednesday. Kasi yan yung next na less, um, session natin dapat. Diba? Pero hindi na tayo mag-online during those time. Offline na. So yan. You have time to do your um, <clears throat> activity. Tapos, kanya-kanyang FB group ipapasa. Mag maglalagay ulit ako ng picture. Ang term natin doon is drop box where you can comment your answers. Hindi pwedeng encoded. Handwritten ito, mga kapatid. During prelims, hindi ako nagpapasa ng encoded. Um, ano lang, handwritten lang. Okay, so yellow paper, mabalin. Mamabalin ko po ban, lawan. Mamabalin white paper, lawan. Basta nalinis nga papel. Diyan, mabasa nga pa. Mabasa ti uh, nakaisurat. Ayan. So, ulitin natin for the last time yung ating activity. Research activity yung ito. This is actually a part of your quiz already. So, um, um, you research on these crimes. Eight crimes lang yung nilagay natin. Ito kasi yung parang pinaka-global crimes na nangyayari. Although marami pa namang kasama dito, ito lang muna yung focus natin. So, mag-research kayo sa mga continents na tatlo lang na una ha, Asian, European, tsaka yung Pacific and Oceania. Huwag nyong gagawin yung nandito na tatlo. So, yun lang yung gagawin niyo Asian, European, and Pacific and Oceania countries. Mag-research kayo ng at least five. You research on the top five countries sa Asian countries kung sino yung may mga top five na ang um, crime nila is theft or robbery, terrorism, um, labor crimes, ganyan. Maraming, maraming ano, maraming kasali yung Pilipinas dito, I'm sure. Yun. So, yun. Nasagot ko na yung um, kailan ilalagay, anong oras yung submission, ano yung due date, ganyan. Due date nyo sa Wednesday, 5 p.m., no extensions. You have a lot of time to do this. Ah, dapat lang mala daw 10 p.m. ah. Mm. Paano yun? Ah, good question. Paano yung ibang regular students? Yes, the same um deadline. The same activity kapag section A, section G, and section I ka, the same activity, and then the same deadline. Ayan. So, yung mga um, classmates ninyo, yung mga, may yung mga class presidents kasi ninyo nakausap ko earlier yung iba May mga classmates kayo na back subject lang nila ito or meron silang ibang subject during this time na nagdi-discuss tayo. That's okay. They can rewatch yung um, video pero pwede silang uh, pero i-comment pa rin nila yung names sa attendance and they will do the same activity. They will pass the same activity at the same due date. Mabalin di ban paper ko na adin ko. Yellow paper actually, lalagay ko sana dito yellow paper pero baka garod adaw ang tagda mag eta, coupon ban, white paper, any any sheet of paper basta pwede nating maintindihan. Ano? Sige, sulat mo sa tissue, tignan ko lang kung maisulat mo sa tissue. Ngayon, yung husband ko mag pwede daw ko magsulat sa tissue, tignan ko lang kung masulat mo sa tissue. Hindi <laughs> alam ko. Sige, sulat mo sa tissue, tignan ko nga. Sige, sulat mo sa tissue yung I love you, tignan ko kung masulat mo. Tingnan ko. Pati ipakita mo sa akin. Kutawa ko. So, anyhow, ayan. Ban paper is okay. Any other questions? Brothers and sisters? <laughs> Anong naksa na all sit? Oy, punta rin kayo ng deal sa Baguio tapos magdala kayo ng mga kasama nyo as a friend. Ganyan. Oo naman yun. Yes. O, sa kamay nyo daw isulat tong anak ko naman ang hiya lang. Di kaya na, you, you write your module on your hand. Let me see. Oy, madi kayo pala ang sasana. All, naapo, nagiting ubing. Mm. You know, relationships are good if you have a good relationship. Ganun. Yan nga, magtawag kayo ng mga friend. 
magtawag kayo na kahit sino, tapos dalhin nyo sa Baguio as a friend, ganun. O eh, no, hindi, ka, hindi open ang tourism ng Baguio ngayon, GCQ kami eh. Holiday nga dito sa Cordillera, pero hindi ko holiday kasi ano, sa norte naman ako nagtuturo. Ganun. Mamati kayo dito nga as a friend, as a friend. Ano, tinesting talaga dyan, anak ko nga nang isurat. Diyan tissue. <laughs> Ay, kumande. You're disturbing me. One, make it to tibag you as a friend. La, huwag question yun. Dito yung activity tayo, ah. Maliwanag. Baka, di, madi yun na awatan. Ag-PPM kayo ito kanya. Kaya kayo sungsung bata. Awanan, damagin nyo, kakabsat. Mapanti oras ni. Awan, data na dagita na duman. Ay, wag. Pwede naman, as a lover, pumunta rito sa Baguio. Okay lang din. O, ilang kasi yung as a friend na yun ng issue ng showbiz talaga. So, sana, sana lahat kayo makapasyal din dito sa Baguio or sa Cordillera. Mm, awang garo damagan yun. Dagiti awang damagan na. <laughs> yung may... Walang tatanong dyan, tapos wala nang isi-chismis, ganyan. Okay nang mag-live sa ating, um, you know, live stream, ayan. Nagaantay lang kasi ako ng question, kaya naka-standby pa lang ako. Baka yung mga wala nang data dyan, tapos ipilipilit yun, but okay na. Tapos na yung ating lecture, basta na-screenshot nyo na. Ayan yung mga na- <laughs> looking, LF daw yung isa dyan, oh. Tignan nyo yung comment box, may nag lf ng friend. Punta kayo dun sa ano, kapag gusto nyo. <laughs> ng um, friend. Punta kayo dun sa Facebook ng face tapos dash book. B-O-K. Facebook ng PMA. Ayun, maraming naghanap ng friends. Ayun. Maraming naghanap ng friends na ear. Ganun. Ayun, yung mga walang question dyan, okay na mag ha sa ating broadcast. Nakikichismis lang ako. Ganun. So, thank you. Thank you sa mga nakapag-join ngayong hapon. You do your activity. Sana naintindihan nyo yung lesson apart from the jokes. Mga ganun. Wala, ang damag nyo. Again, again, ang arti live stream. Ang tanong, I'm hungry. Ang, I'm hungered. I'm hungry na. And of course, para sa mga yun nga, yung mga nagde-data lang dyan, kawawa naman. Anyway, that's it for this afternoon. Thank you guys for joining and uh, keep safe everyone. Thank you for joining. God bless.